let's carry on. Let's carry on. We talked about how different GIS from other system. GIS is not CAD, AutoCAD. So when you're taking, you're teaching GIS, someone who knows AutoCAD will easily understand what you are talking about. But there's something about AutoCAD. I don't know the latest version. And there are efforts being made to make AutoCAD more like connect, like connect with GIS. I see AutoCAD is GIS, you know, to give it some special capabilities. So the question is that, why don't you just remain where you are and let GIS be GIS? But of course, there's the need to combine the interior IOK, of a building, all the information concerning the interior of a building with what happens in the neighborhood IOK, or the environment where the building is situated. The immediate vicinity, let me just say. All right, so CAD is not GIS. So don't think I know CAD, but maybe it will be easy for someone who knows CAD to appreciate what GIS is. So yes, a computer-aided design is, is different from GIS. It does 3D graphic creation, GIS design. So you can use it to do a lot of designing things and stuff like that. For your road design, yes, CAD, you can just use CAD and you'll be fine. But it's not a GIS. You won't be able to do any analysis on what is happening like in terms of location. <clears throat> so don't ref it doesn't reference via geographic location per se. CAD sees the world as a 3D cube, GIS as a 3D sphere. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> and that is so true. That is so true. In AutoCAD, you always have, you know, this coordinate system. Are you okay? In AutoCAD, you have a coordinate system. In GIS, you have a coordinate system, but there's a slight difference. Okay. You see, AutoCAD having that Y and then and X and all that. So in GIS, you will not see this per se. Are you okay? In GIS, you just have the world projected. Are you okay? And of course, you can do extrusion with some extensions of GIS, are you okay? But the reason we are saying that the F is looked at as a sphere is that then you are actually working from longitudes to projected coordinate systems, are you with me? All right, so yeah, we don't take into consideration the, the, the concept of projection, the world not being round, it's not mentioned. Hey, I should be careful, this is an engineering surveying class, I shouldn't go deeper than I'm, I'm supposed to. So let's move on. Let's touch on what we need to touch on. We can say goodbye. All right. Like I said, today's lecture is going to be end very quickly. Finish very soon. All right. <clears throat> so have I started recording? I don't think I have. Let me, oh, I have. Okay, good. All right. So scientific visualization systems, of course, sophisticated multidimensional graphics. Uh, but lack the W supports, lack two dimensions. So you should know what it, what a GIS is and what it is not. It is GIS is not a scientific visualization system. It's not a facilities management system. Are you okay? CAD, COM. Are you okay? It's not a DBMS. That's what we are saying. Why GIS? So listen again. Maybe it's the first time you are hearing GIS. So. This is a very good introduction so that when you are doing GIS as a course, then you are not totally like if hearing for the first time again. 80% of local government activities are estimated to be geographically based. Are you okay? Let's look at some of them. Plots, zoning. Are you okay to zone an area and say this area is for residential purposes? This area is for that. That aspect that the local government, so we say local government, I believe we all know. You go to the assembly, you know, that is local government, isn't it? And then you need a permit. Then you need a permit, okay? All that, there's a lot of analysis that needs to be done. And because we are not making use of these systems, there's a lot of wastage. Time is being spent traveling, unnecessary travel. It's just like the phone, before the phone was, the advent of the phone, we, we traveled, isn't it? You travel to the village only to realize that your uncle has traveled. Your uncle is not there. 
He's also going to another village. Today, you don't do that, don't you? You just call and say, hello, I'll be coming. Things have changed. Are you okay? A lot of side visits are not necessary. Okay, so most of the things that happen in local government, 80% of it is estimated to be geographically based or related. Garbage collection. I mean, let's go to Zoom Lion and look at what is happening in Zoom Lion. The truck could be moving around and just be wasting fuel. You wouldn't maybe know. Are you okay? So all that, these aspects of engineering, so the engineer can become some kind of backward professional that lives in the modern in the modern time. Are you okay? What I just what I just said now, you can put it on your status on WhatsApp. Are you okay? The engineer can become some kind of backward professional living in the modern time. Because you're not making use of smart technologies. So you just not being efficient enough. And you just always in some kind of pickup being an engineer. Whilst you're supposed to be doing the design and be looking at your site, a virtual representation of your site on a computer. So I'm saying this with engineering, you know, surveying in mind. <laughs> You're okay. Because I, I have to re-emphasize that engineering surveying is all about engineering. Are you okay? You need to go and set the thing out. What else do you want to do? Of course, the materials, the strength of material, things, soil test and all those things are very important as well. But engineering, the core of it is what we're doing, what we're talking about in this course. Significant portion of state government has a geographical component. Are you okay? So govern, how do you govern a state? Significant portion of it. Are you okay? I don't want to sound too social science, so I'll skip. But natural resource management, if that is not engineering, I don't know what else that is okay. Obviously, like I said, at the end of the day, the engineer has to go and calculate. You know, but you can't be boxed into are you okay, a more of an assistant, an assistant to the engineer, someone who is like more technical. An engineer is an engineer, he's a manager. I get it that okay, he makes decisions based on calculations. All right, but if he's blind to the location, then it becomes quite backward because he's not making use of technology. All right, and he's spending more money on traveling around. And if, for example, the transportation costs of material movements means everything to us, then GI, so, so you can really see that that's where GI is also another area GI is fits. Movement of material, all right? Borrowing material for fill. Where are we getting it? Are you okay? Are we getting it from OEB or from Shire Hills? Like that affects the whole project cost and engineering has got to do with that, the economy, all right? Economizing resource. Businesses use GIS for a very wide array of applications. So businesses. <laughs> um, let me talk about precision agriculture. Oh, I was going to skip this one, but look at it. Civil engineering, construction. Are you okay? This is why we need GIS. I'm giving the reason why we need GIS. Military and defense. Are you okay? Um, are we interested in that? Should we be interested in that? When we talk about military people, we start thinking people, we have military men, infantry battalion, going to kill some people. Are you okay? Um, at the battlefield. No, 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 it's far from that. Yeah, the military is a whole world on its own. That's why they have their own police. So military and defense. Okay, let me talk about military. You need geo people who can tell you, locate, give you the locations. Before you go and put in that bridge, are you with me? So just don't call an engineer, go and put on that bridge and go and get himself killed. So like they need it as well to plan the route. How do we get there? Are you okay? Immediately that question of where, where, there, how do you get there? If you don't use GIS, you will just be wasting your money. You just be wasting resource. Are you okay? All right. So satellite imagery interpretation, all that is GIS. Because GI is kind of, it's a, it's a technology, an information, a GI technology, remote sensors, a GI technology, they are all related, very much related. Okay. Scientific research, of course, if you just want to analyze, just, just go around, pick some soil samples, do some 
you know, moisture content analysis. And then now just don't do that analysis. Also start to look at how they vary over space. Then Gina is as coming that it has entered your world. And so that is another, but there, of course, there are more. You can see that there are areas that you may not be interested in as someone who wants to become an engineer per se. But I'm just bringing out the bits that are important to us. All right, so ignore the topic on top, uh, where most students come from, go to. But obviously, we are trying to justify the use of GIS in transportation. Look at that. Look at that transportation. That's an area you can specialize in as a civil engineer. Now, so in, in, in engineering surveying, are you okay? What do we want to do when it comes to transportation? We want to plan, are you okay? Where, what's, where should we put the next routes? You're just there building routes everywhere, but it's good. Well done. You know how children behave, right? They've done some very nice, beautiful thing, but they just done it at the wrong time. You got visitors, and that's when <laughs> you know what I'm saying. They mess up. So we don't. That's why I say that to be complete, then you need to understand how the geographic information system work. Airline routing planning. Are you with me? Yeah. Even though the focus of engineering surveying is to, of course, to build the road, to build a structure, set out. Are you okay setting out? We need to understand this as well. These are the aspects of engineering surveying that you need to know. Are you okay? All right, to analyze the locations where you want to place something, just put that in your mind that that's the main focus. Um, real estate and marketing, I don't want to go into that, but when you look at something like retail site selection, um, it's just like site, okay, or let me just put that one aside, site evaluation, I want to know where I should pick my material from. Are you okay? All right. So there's material for fill. Are you okay? Um, please, I need to know which material I should bring, I should use. Okay. You can do a side evaluation and decide, okay, this is the best place to get it from. Sometimes people are manipulated. Let's look at, I'll use the analogy of the taxi drivers that we had before. Uber and all these other people. And Uber has been here about for just how many years? I don't even know. But since before they came in, you all know what taxi drivers used to do. They will fight with us. They will charge you per the type of shoe you are wearing. If you are wearing a certain brand of shoe, your charge is different. <laughs> okay. Um, a lot of people fought. I, I actually witnessed once incident around the Medina UPS area where um, the ladies have actually chatted a taxi and when it got to the other end and the taxi driver was like, oh, that wasn't the deal. Like the girls are like, no, that wasn't the deal either. And they're not gonna give him the extra money he's requesting and asking for. You understand that? Um, what am I saying? I'm saying that if you don't start adapting, you know, GIS into our actual works that we do in the design and all that, yeah. And choice, you know, when we do mass or diagrams and stuff, we talked about transporting material, for example. If you don't like, if you don't start applying the GIS to it, then for a time will come, it, the new thing will be that, okay, people can just decide where they bring the material from. Are you okay? Because you can, you can be told that we're bringing the material from this place, so it's expensive. Are you okay? You don't have a clue. What you're talking about because no giants has been applied and what did uber do they just brought in an application that's all all right and that solved the whole problem who would have thought that an app will solve our problems with the taxi i i, I always felt a bit intimidated when i sit in the taxi you get out not uh, not very happy um you jump in you don't even know the taxi driver is also not very happy when you get to the other end so um, yeah, effect and what Uber is doing for us is that it's bringing fairness, cost effectiveness, okay, in getting transport services. Okay, anyway, so like I said, these are some areas where, but the focus for you as a student is to look at the construction, okay, construction engineering, civil engineering applications. See quarrying petroleum, you know, you see quarrying in there, mm? of course. So we need to understand that 
that is all part of engineering, Sabine. All right. Um, of course, the application areas are many. These are all part of it. Urban planning. So it's up to the student to look at it. Are you okay? And see if there's something you can get out of this one. Urban planning, zoning, subdivision planning, land acquisition, economic development, you know, housing renovation. Are you getting that programs? So if you were to do some work, we always talked about recce, reconnaissance. Are you okay? Before you go in there, whose house should we renovate? Things like that. Your civil engineer, the engineering, the basic part of it, setting out can't do that for you. Setting out, your knowledge in setting out won't be able to tell you, are you okay? Which house to renovate? For example, you can see that. So that's where GIS comes in. Environmental sciences, management of watersheds, because um, skip political science, I don't want to know about that. Yeah, civil engineering, locating underground facilities. Um, we talked about that. Guys, remember in mind surveying, we said that there's a need for us to prepare underground plants. Are you okay? And the underground plants should cover all, of, you know, works that are ongoing down there. Are you okay? And so, how do you now do that? Whilst we all know that there are different layers, the top, there are different layers. Are you okay? That you can get to in the mine shaft as you go down. So now, how do you place all of them? It's the same location. You got that. So GIS has the ability to do that. Okay. Coordination of infrastructure maintenance. Are you okay? So that should also be looked at. Okay. So GI, GI, geographic information, locational information, locational information. See how that is very important for us. So a surveyor may be able to solve some of this. If it's a geodetic, geomatic engineering, formerly geodetic engineering engineer, yeah, then they can help you to do the GI aspects. If, of course, if they're not good in it, you don't have to let them do it. But if they are good, they can tell you the best places to get, you know, the right resources to and from and if in, if in what time are you okay all right so yeah so i'm skipping some of them which may not be related but it tells you how big gis is everybody's getting a bite into it is okay so what gis applications do they manage they analyze and they communicate i'm saying the same things over and over again you know they make possible the automation of activities involving geographic data, map production, calculation of areas, distances. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So isn't that beautiful? Because we're just talking about calculating areas. GIS does it on the fly like that. Okay. In AutoCAD, how do you get an area of an object? Okay. So you need to know what you're on about to calculate the area. You need to put in a command. GISs have an interesting way of calculating areas. That makes you like, you can just measure distances. But that's one thing these days I realize I do a lot. I go to Google Earth, which is a GI system. And then I take a ruler and I measure. And the last time I checked the distance from Medina to Kaswa, they're about 40 kilometers. I mean, like that's, that's quite a distance. Are you okay? And I realized that the same distance will apply for moving from Medina to a place like a Croupon in the Ekapim district. What is that doing for you? That's helping you as an engineer to appreciate. Are you okay? There's some of the decisions that you are making. It's not making you a good engineer. Are you okay? All right. So, yeah, if the civil engineer cannot do it, you should get a geomatic engineer to do that for them. Measurement of slope aspect view shed. These are very interesting things you can do. You, you could just double check for your contract and find out that this whole thing, is it not, is this whole structure not sitting in a watershed? For example, this just view shed. I'll mention over here, I'll, I'll talk about view shed in a minute, but briefly, you can see that the view shed, watershed, I'm interested in that because if my 
building is going to be inundated with water or my, my structure is going to be inundated in water. What's the point in me building it anyway? Okay. So we should become better professionals. That's what, you know, we're saying logistics, road planning, vehicle tracking. <laughs> Can you imagine if you put a, G a GPS chip on every tractor of yours? Could you also think about getting a specialist to build a small application that tracks where your tractors are? Of course, people are doing this business, but yeah. What if you had a professional in the organization that could just build this for you, all right? Then all the location that you get from all your vehicles can be visualized. So remember I said, that's what GIS is doing, is allowing you to collect, to store, to analyze, to visualize geographic information. I want you to understand what I'm talking about. That's why I'm talking plenty. Allow for the integration of data into the data header to confine to independent domains, property maps, air photos, integration. GIS yeah, is all about integration, more sensing GPS, drone, mm, photogrammetry. We can tie the data to maps, permits, the sustained communication of complex part, special patterns. All right, so obviously, yeah, uh, this is just English language, but spatial patterns means we can see what's going on around us and whether there's some kind of, um, um, I don't know, relation okay, between the activities. All right, provides access to spatial queries. All right, so that's the interesting thing about GIA is that we can actually do what we call a spatial query. So the spatial query says, find out, all structures that are within one kilometer from the quarry site. Like, can you imagine that? And like I said, don't look at this small building you're putting up. So if someone is just putting up, think about a bigger construction project. That is what your training is for. And giants can do that. Look at that. How many elderly in Richardson live further than 10 minutes in, at rush hour? from ambulance service. So that can be translated to what I just said. Are you okay? How many, you know, um, laborers in on the site leave 10 minutes at rush hour from the site? Like, you know, like you can always come up with something like that. And then you get an answer. How do you get the answer? The answer will be in the form of highlighted objects. So you can see them. We are not doing any we are not going deeper than this, what I'm saying. This just whets your appetite. Like I whet my dad's appetite when I finish learning, you know, my course. Anyway, perform complex spatial modeling. So spatial modeling means that we can actually relate things that are happening on the ground. So, okay, in case there's an emergency, are you okay? And if this building were not here, and if this were here, and if this collapsed, blah, 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 you can do that kind of what we call the what if scenarios. Are you okay? So GIS is like the main thing. The architecture of GIS is like that. You have to put in data, it's very important. You should be able to query the input. There should be a geographic database, like I said, a spatial database. You should be able to output and display, okay, the data, are you okay? Transformation, and you should be able to do some analysis with it. This is the architecture, are you okay? Of a GIS system. This is the architecture of a GIS system. This is the architecture of a GIS system. Okay. All right. So, yep. Do we even need this? Computer science, MIS, I think you got feel it. No, this is not necessary for you. All right. Uh, would there be a break? Do you have a question? You can ask me. I hope you are following what I'm saying. We are going to change topics soon, and we are going to talk about hydrographic surveying. Then we will close the class, okay? But if you if you follow what I'm saying and you want to add, we can. If you don't understand, you can ask a question. I'm not very generous when it comes to giving you marks. I'm not very generous, but I'm also not like I don't have this iron fist thing when it comes. I'm I'm not you know. I told the queer that. We 
I'm very nice. But what I don't like is when you lie. Are you okay? So don't lie to me. <laughs> okay, I could, I could type if you hear me. Type something. <laughs> yeah, please don't lie to me. That's the only thing. If you don't lie to me, I can be very generous. Do you follow this? If you don't follow it, you can ask a question. If you, if you don't follow it, I'll move on anyway. You understand that? There's this funny guy. I don't know whether he's a comedian. And he's making videos. And anytime he makes a video, he has some a group of boys behind him and he'll just say something like, it is well with you, everything you do this year, if your enemies are whatever, whatever, whatever. then they will all repeat, repeat whatever he says after him. And, and then he just say, we move. Anyway, so we move, yeah? All right. Here is the term model. It's nothing. Are you okay? It's nothing. What am I saying? It's nothing. It allows the geographic features in the real world location to be digitally represented. So something on the ground, and you want to put it into another world, a virtual world. Are you okay? So how would you do that? You have to find a way to represent the objects. It's okay. So that is the data model. Simple as, simple as that. That's how GIS actually handles what we call the data model. Okay. It allows to gather features in the real world locations to be digitally represented and stored in a database so that they can be abstractly represented in a map and other form. It can also be what they've manipulated to address some problem. Are you okay? So GI data models are like that. So your real world is on the left hand side, geographic features, abstract representation, right? Let me get um, something I can use to point at. Okay, so this is like the real world. Are you okay? Then we have the a lot of things going on there. We have buildings. Okay, we have aircraft moving. We have so there'll be an airport somewhere. We have trees. Okay. Uh, uh, got a tree. Okay. Now underground you can see we have a whole lot going on solid waste is going in there there's a, the water table is there you see shale now shale is like the geology okay, of the area so you live on top you eat in burger are you okay and you enjoy yourself the ordinary man let me put it that way Right, but you don't know. You don't know that there's a lot that's happening. Some people don't even know the district that they live in. If I even asked everyone in this class, tell me which district you're in, a lot of people wouldn't have a clue. All right. So there's a lot that happens at the same place, the same location that you are. All right. So what GIS does is that all these objects and the things that are even beneath, we should be able to represent them. That's my, I'm not using a mouse, so I'm struggling a bit. Everything we see here is representing everything that we are seeing on the left hand side. Okay. So this is what is happening. And this is a representation of everything here. But look at the symbols. We are using symbols to represent everything. This doesn't look like it exactly as it is, but we can interpret the map. So the map communicates, are you okay? The message to us, it's all right. So GIS does that same thing. So 
there's always a line to draw between the map, the GIS itself. Are you okay? All right. Of course, every engineer should like or love a map. What I like a map, of course, you don't love things. So like a map. So now, why do you like a map? Why, sh why should you appreciate a map? Because everything you're doing, your design, and it's like in the form of that. It's like a representation. Even your design is a representation of something. All right. So the GIS data model is looking for basic primitives, very simple representations to say that when you see a television set, use the symbol. When you use a chair, use it. It's like that. It's like symbolizing. But it goes beyond that. The data model is not symbology. It's not you symbolizing something. It's about you representing the thing to the best precision possible. All right, so that is the GIS model. It's very important. Okay, so here you can see the layers, okay? I think I told you that if we don't touch on layers again, let's appreciate it in the previous slide. But so you can see hydrology, Topography, land use, utilities, soils, streets, districts, parcel, all that and more. I told you that this is the list is endless. Okay, it's endless. You can clearly see that the region is missing out of this. This place, you are in a certain region. All that can be kept, IRM, as different layers. Okay. So, yep, that's your world. Mm -hmm. And you have data is organized by layers. I think now you appreciate what layers are. Coverages or themes, are you okay? Uh, so topics, think about a topic, like um, what do you want to, but it has to be something you can relate to, are you okay? And you create a layer for that, all right. Layers are integrated using explicit location on the earth surface, the, ge the geographic location, is organizing principle. So in other words, you can have two layers with different locational information. In other words, if there's something we call coordinate system, that all the layers have to belong to the same coordinate system. Are you right? Um, which we will look at later on in life. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Okay, so this is the idea of GIS. The, the GIS model, you can look at, uh, roads, hydro, hydrology, all these things are uh, modeling the world. In, so the hydrology is being modeled like lines. Look at the roots. The roots are also being modeled as lines. And the uh, topography, maybe some kind of contour or something like that. All right. Now, so the way that you represent everything on the surface of the earth, there are two options. Are you okay? You have the vector and then the raster. Are you okay? So you can see it appearing here nicely okay so vector and then raster okay so that we're talking about GIS data model that's what we're talking about what it means is that you represent hydrology some rivers rivers as that as lines but when you go on the ground, you really see that this is not a line at all, isn't it? There, it's a river, but really, you know, it's bigger than the line. But a line is only a representation, all right? Now, you can actually have what we call the spatial data. You can have what we call the attribute data. So the attribute data describes the location. <clears throat> Excuse me. That is, you get to know the, where it is. Are you okay? Prison break. Coordinates are stored in a book. Are you with me? Prison break is a you know a series that was shown some years back, and you have numbers written in a book. Where what what does these numbers mean? Well, I need a book. I need to know what where something is. So that is special data. Sac data is called special data. Now we have we call the attribute data. Now the attribute data specifies what how how much when is the characteristic of the object is another set of data. But normally, prior to GIS. Data has been just, you know, attributes. People have been just keeping attribute data. They just, they didn't even care about the special. Are you okay? 
So that is basically it. I think I'm talking too much about this topic. I need to close it. But today, anyway, we're talking about this in hydrographic surveying. So we will we'll move on. After when the, it disconnects, we're going to hydrographic surveying. I'll end the GIS with this one. We have two minutes on this one. If you don't understand what I said previously, you can look at it. Spatial data specifies the location. Normally, the file format for spatial data is the shape file. Okay. You can't relate to it because we are not doing any practical. Are you okay? All right. Now, this afternoon, I'm doing a practical on it in another subject, another course. All right. But since you haven't even passed this course, you shouldn't be worried about You shouldn't be concerned about that. Attribute data. Okay, specifies characteristics. I've talked about that already. It's stored in a database table. All right. So database table, sometimes Excel, people call Excel their databases. I don't blame them. It's a flat file, flat file database. GIS systems, I can traditionally maintain special attribute data separately, then join them for display, of course. Of course. So that one is database theory. I okay in databases, you can actually like join later like you, you store data in different tables and you relate them in what we call the relational database system. But um, I don't want to bore you with that. I want you to just know something, special data attribute or non-special data. I don't for attribute data is non-special data, is that okay? All right, so <clears throat> we have the raster, like I said, and the vector model. The raster uses pictures. The vector uses points, lines, and polygons. So. I think this is something that you have to all know. Are you okay? So you can read about it. As your assignment, go and read more about it. You can see how the polygon is represented. It looks more like uh, some kind of leak. Okay, anyway, so let's rejoin and then I'll change the topic. Is all right? Let's end this one here. I think we'll be done. When we come, we just round this one up. Is all okay? We are not in a hurry. Then I'll talk about hydrographic survey and then we close. Is all right? So basically, that's that. Let me end this before and it ends itself.